Chapter Two of Star Girl. I had to admit, the more I saw of her, the easier it was to believe she was a plant, a joke, anything but real. On that second day, she wore bright red baggy shorts with a bib and shoulder straps, overall shorts. Her sandy hair was pulled back into twin plaited pigtails, each tied with a bright red ribbon. A rouge smudged applied each cheek, and she even dabbed some oversized freckles on her face. She looked like Heidi or Bo Peep. At lunch, she was all alone at her table. As before, when she finished eating, she took up her ukulele, but this time she didn't play. She got up and started walking among the tables. She stared at us. She stared at one face, then another, and another. The kind of bold, I'm looking at you stare you almost never get from people, especially from strangers. She appeared to be looking for someone, and the whole lunchroom had become very uncomfortable. As she approached our table, I thought, what if she's looking for me? The thought terrified me. So I turned from her. I looked at Kevin. I watched him grin goofily up at her. He wiggled his fingers at her and whispered, Hi, Star Girl. I didn't hear an answer. I was intensely aware of her passing behind my chair. She stopped two tables away. She was smiling at a pudding bodied senior named Alan Furco. The lunchroom was dead silent. She stared, strumming the uke, and singing. It was happy birthday, and when she came to his name, she didn't just sing his name, but his full name. Happy birthday, dear Alan Furco. Alan Furco's face turned red as Bo Peep's pigtail ribbons. There was a flurry of whistles and hoots, more for Alan Furco's sake, I think, than hers. As Stargirl marched out, I could see Hilary Kimball across the lunchroom, rising from her seat, pointing, saying something I could not hear. I'll tell you one thing, Kevin said as we joined the mob in the hallways. She better be fake. I asked him what he meant. I mean, if she's real, she's in big trouble. How long do you think somebody who's really like that is going to last around here? Good question. Micah Area High School, M-A-H-S, was not exactly a hotbed of nonconformity. There were individual variants here and there, of course, but within pretty narrow limits, we all wore the same clothes, talked the same way, ate the same food, listened to the same music. Even our dorks and nerds had M-A-H-S stamped on them. If we happened to somehow distinguish ourselves, we quickly snapped back into place, like rubber bands. Kevin was right. It was unthinkable that Stargirl could survive, or at least survive unchanged among us. But it was also clear that Hillary Kimball was at least half right. This person calling herself Stargirl may or may not have been a faculty plant for school spirit, but whatever she was, she was not real. She couldn't be. Several times in those early weeks of September, she showed up in something outrageous, a 1920s flapper dress, an Indian buckskin, a kimono. One day, she wore a denim miniskirt with green stockings, and crawling up one leg was a parade of enamel ladybug and butterfly pins. Normal for her were long, floor-brushing pioneer dresses and skirts. Every few days in the lunchroom, she serenaded someone new with happy birthday. I was glad my birthday was in the summer. In the halls, she said hello to perfect strangers. The seniors couldn't believe it. They had never seen a 10th grader so bold. 
In class, she was always flapping her hand in the air, asking questions, though the questions often had nothing to do with the subject. One day, she asked a question about trolls in U.S. history class. She made a song about isosceles triangles. She sang it to her plain geometry class. It was called, Three Sides Have I, But Only Two Are Equal. She joined the cross-country team. Our house meets were held on the Micah Country Club golf course. Red flags showed the runners the way to go. In her first meet, out in the middle of the course, she turned left when everyone else turned right. They waited for her at the finish line. She never showed up. She was dismissed from the team. One day, a girl screamed in the hallway. She had seen a tiny brown face pop up from Star Girl's sunflower canvas bag. It was her pet rat. It rode to school in the bag every day. One morning, we had a rare rainfall. It came during gym class. The teacher told everyone to come in. On the way to the next class, they looked out the windows. Star Girl was still outside in the rain, dancing. We wanted to define her, to wrap her up as we did each other, but we could not seem to get past weird and strange and goofy. Her ways knocked us off balance. A single word seemed to hover in the cloudless sky over the school. Huh? Everything she did seemed to echo Hillary Kimball, she's not real. She's not real. And each night in bed, I thought of her as the moon came through my window. I could have lowered my shade to make it darker and easier to sleep, but I never did. In that moonlit hour, I acquired a sense of the otherness of things. I liked the feeling the moonlight gave me as if it wasn't the opposite of day, but it's underside, it's private side. When the fabulous purred on my snow white sheet like some dark cat come in from the desert. It was during one of these night moon times that it came to me that Hillary Kimball was wrong. Star Girl was real.